debt could be considered awesome. Awesome in the sense that you manifested a scenario where you could borrow money so that you could have an experience or, or have some goods and services occur without you actually having to have the money in that moment. So debt is awesome if you really look at it from a particular position. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. My name is Preston Smiles, and I help people get free from the inside out, regardless of their external circumstances. And today's transmission is debt and savings as a spiritual practice. Now, I have six rules, uh, if you may, principles to abide by, to live from. But before we get into those six, I just want to talk about debt and savings and uh, how I view it, right? So I think we need to start with an understanding that debt isn't real. And what I mean by that is, yes, there can be real debt, but it isn't and doesn't have to be real in your system. There are certain connotations that we have all been born into, collective pain body conversations. And debt is this word, this taboo, scary word that usually denotes some level of shame or guilt or fear or gotta hurry up and get out of it energy. And so for me, I don't let debt take my power. And that's going to be one of the biggest pieces that all of you get to really understand is that you don't have to give that power, right? You don't, you don't have to give that power to some construct when in reality debt could be considered awesome awesome in the sense that you manifested a scenario where either you could or were in position or lived in a country or place where you could borrow money so that you could have an experience or or have some goods and services occur without you actually having to have that the, the 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 money in that moment. So so debt is awesome if you really look at it from a particular position. You know, I have a lot of rich friends and by the way, if you have not gotten my book Spiritual Millionaire, go to prestonsmiles.com forward slash book. We talk about all of this in there. But I have a lot of rich friends who use debt to buy more things. I have a lot of rich friends who instead of using their own capital to bring this idea forward, they go to other people and say, hey, can I use some of your money to, to, to grow this business? Hey, can I, can I take a little bit of your money to, to uh, pull out this concept? And it's all a maybe. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But all my broke friends never do that. And when they do, if they do, they hold it in contempt. Oh, there's so much shame. I have so much debt. And so I really want you to understand that their debt could be looked at in a very awesome way. A few more pieces before I get into the actual six. Also, savings is sexy and spiritual as uck, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Savings is sexy, meaning it's beautiful. It's interesting. Sex is creation. When I save, I'm saving for creation. There was a point in maybe 2016, 2017, where I had half a million dollars in my account and I was still driving my beat up Prius. I was still living way, quote unquote, below my means in a small apartment in Venice Beach. I was surfing, I was doing my thing and I was building something and I was saving for the house that I wanted to buy my family. I was saving for the house I wanted to buy my mom. I was saving so that when I did have a child, which I wanted, I wanted kids, I wanted a big family, that I would not be in any form of scarcity. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. When it came time for us as a family to buy our first house, I had a bunch of money to pull from, which was beautiful and such a good feeling to know that I was willing to play the long game. Such a good feeling to know that I was willing to bypass the egoic standards and things to keep up with the Joneses and, and my neighbors and try to be fancy like some of the people I knew who were quote unquote passing me by in material possessions. To tap in and tune in to a longer, bigger vision 
for what the money is for. So savings is sexy. Save, save whatever you can, not from scarcity. That's one of the biggest pieces. Don't save from scarcity, save from vision, save from gratitude, save from what is handwritten on your soul. Save because you believe in yourself and where you're going. The last piece I'll share on this before I get into the six rules and principles, and I know some of you are thinking to yourself, bro, these are the six rules and principles. They are. They are, and there's more. One of the last things I'll share with you is your abundance supports others. So what you may be deeming as debt is actually supporting people's livelihoods. I'll give you an example. You know, I sometimes, we have four kids, we can be out doing a bunch of stuff and we'll say, oh, well, let's just Uber eat. And we'll order Uber Eats and Uber, I'm gonna get you because I'll order five things and it'll be $682, but that's a whole nother conversation. But the Uber driver, my abundance supports the Uber driver. My abundance supports Uber, the company, which employs a bunch of really beautiful souls. The local cafe that I go to, Summer Moon Coffee. My abundance supports the baristas and the, the, the bakers. My abundance supports so many people. And so as I view quote unquote debt, like just to give you guys even more context, eight months ago, the IRS said, we would like you to pay us $260,000. And in seven months, we paid that off. My wife and I paid that off. Now, the reason I paid it off is because the interest on the IRS and the penalties was so ridiculous that I needed that to go pretty soon. The beautiful part, and why I'm sharing this, is I didn't pay it off from scarcity. I paid it off from, okay, I like paved roads. I like traffic lights. I like libraries. I like some semblance of law and order. And so my tax dollars go to some of that. Does it go to some other stuff I don't like? Yes. And I take care of what I can take care of. I focus on what is mine to focus on. There are people who are working on the thing that I don't like because it's really a passionate thing for them. For me, it's like, oh, I don't like that. And the greatest gift I can give to the planet is not to focus on what I don't like, but to focus on what I do and to give from the overflow while the new system and the new earth and the new world gets reconfigured. So I participate and I vote with my dollars in that way. Okay, these are my six rules for viewing debt and savings as a spiritual practice. Rule number one, you must embrace an abundance mindset. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that you get to recognize that the universe is abundant and that the financial challenges that you're experiencing are temporary. You get to trust that there is a power, a divine orchestration that knows exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It knows when to rotate the planets and the suns and the moons and the stars and all the other things that are occurring on our planets. It knows and you don't need to control it. So, so, so principle number one is embracing an abundance mindset as you navigate moving through and with debt and savings. Principle number two, practicing an attitude of gratitude. Many of you have heard this. I think a lot of people do it from the space of it's like routine, but it's not like felt. And what I'm challenging you to do is feel the gratitude. Feel the gratitude for the credit card that you were able to use to to go to college. Feel the gratitude for the loan that you got so that your kids can sleep in a house that is yours. Actually feel the gratitude for the doctors and uh, nurses who helped nurse you back to health. Yes, those bills, those doctor bills aren't, you know, it's not fair, but while we live in this current system, if you are going to agree to participate in the system, the, the game is not to look at it and get mad and angry, but to get grateful that you're still here. Some people look at it and they say, oh, my, my glass is half full or my glass is half empty. And I say, just be grateful that you have a glass. You're in the dance. This morning, a lot of people didn't wake up. This morning, a lot of people woke up and they couldn't see, they couldn't hear. A lot of people woke up with a disease from the day before. A lot of people woke up with news that a family member passed away. So the game is to be grateful that you have a glass. Rule number three, release shame and guilt. You know that $260,000 debt that I took on, that came from a mistake that I made, a choice that I made that put myself and my wife and my family in debt. But I can't and won't produce more abundance from lack, scarcity, limitation. I can't and won't produce abundance from fear, scarcity, shame, and guilt. So my job is to learn from, to grow from the mistake and choose life, choose abundance, choose power now, not when, when it's worked out, when I've paid it off. No, choose the power now. See it, feel it, be it now. That's my job, that's your job. So we release 
all shame and guilt when it comes to any mistakes that have been made in the process. You are learning, you are growing, you weren't taught this stuff. Most of us didn't have, you know, <laughs> parents like like myself to walk us through these things so we learn them the hard way but it doesn't have to be hard forever is what i'm saying rule number four visualize your financial independence now to be crystal clear financial freedom is an oxymoron because if my freedom is attached to anything outside of myself i'm not actually free I'm a slave to the money in the account. I'm a slave to the likes or to the compliments. I'm a slave to my, my partner or whatever it is. Whatever my, my quote unquote freedom is attached to, then that thing owns me in that moment. So I say, visualize your financial independence. Feel it, see it. Allow yourself to become emotionally involved with the love story and the triumph and the, the journey that you are on. And let me remind you that an un happy journey will never produce a happy ending. Happy endings come from happy journeys and happy journeys come from realizing and recognizing that there's only one of us here and your job is to dance in that isness. Your job is to reflect and reveal and, and allow and express and experience love in only the way that you can here and now. And when you do that over and over and over and, in, and over again, it becomes a new normal. It becomes a place and a space from which you operate and that, that, that baseline of love and joy and connectivity and, and creativity, that baseline makes you attractive <laughs> to other people. Mm. That's my, that, like literally, I got sick in 2005, heart condition. By 2006, I was healed. By 2008, I was on fire. I had an entire career and life that was birthed out of some of, the, and one of the scariest and worst thing that's ever happened to me. So I'm speaking to you about this, not from uh, the sidelines. This is facts. This is truth for me. And I've seen it and I've coached other people in it. Rule number five, set intentional goals. Now, this is about creating achievable goals for managing and paying off the debt. Align these goals with your values and your spiritual beliefs, but come up with goals, right? Like actually have a plan and then let go of any shame, guilt, or whatever as you go along that plan. And then last but not least, and it's super important, rule number six is get help, seek support, get guidance. Don't try to do it by yourself. There's so much, so many resources and people and scenarios where there's people who know more than you, right? A part of it is you're doing it right now if you're listening to this podcast. You're doing it right now if you're watching this somewhere and you're letting it land. And there are professionals that do this for a living. Sometimes the best gift we can give ourselves is to say, I don't know, I don't got it, but you do, can you help? Now to change your whole life. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If this supported you in any way, I ask really just two things. One, like, subscribe, review, and share it. That's one, some version of that. And two, go to prestonsmiles.com forward slash book. The link will be in the show notes. The link will be right here, wherever we are and get my book, Spiritual Millionaire. There is so much juice in there that will support each and every one of you. It is my life's work that I've poured into this book. I love you. I appreciate you. And until I see you next time, love will find a way. Everything else will find an excuse. Go find a way.